very few retired senior heads of intelligence services speak in public about their work, but one who has is Sir David Ormond, uh, former head of GCHQ. Earlier today I spoke to him in his first interview since our revelations last week. I began by asking him why the relevant legislation, the regulation of investigative powers, or REPA, appears not to be being used in retrieving British data. I think you're making an enormous mountain out of a molehill. Uh, you know, no pun intended in relation to Mr Snowden. I think what you've got to look at is, uh, is it clear to the analysts at GCHQ what are the limits of the law? They have lawyers on site to advise them. I have no reason to believe that those lawyers are not perfectly competent to advise them, that they are operating at all times within the law. Well, let me if put, they, let me put if it they a different thought, way. If they thought they were not, then there would be ructions. Is the citizenry actually satisfied that what is supplied to GCHQ by uh, NSA retrieval um, subject to precisely the same authorization uh, as it is to UK retrieve material which has to go through those authorization standards? No, but I, I, it seems to me you're not asking the right question. The question is, does an analyst at GCHQ or any of the other intelligence agencies go round the law by seeking to obtain material that they would not be authorised to obtain under British law? And if they need authority, have they gone and got the necessary authority. Well, and the, I phone, think the, answer... the phone companies tell us they are circumventing the law, whereas they, they knew no, no, they had no idea that Dishfire even existed. But uh, they were not talked to about but that it. That doesn't demonstrate your point at all. Well, I you... really do think you need to do some more homework on how well, this I, actually. Well, we've done quite a lot of homework works. on it, and what, what, one of the things we are absolutely certain of is that, as any British citizen or any person travels into another domain in which there is a different exchange, data exchange, one of these mega exchanges, then at that moment when it says, welcome to France, Vodafone's delighted mm. to see you, uh, that's the moment at which the NSA is retrieving your metadata. Now that data no. is being fed to GCHQ and is not received by GCHQ in the same way that it is retrieved here in Britain. But GCHQ will be perfectly entitled to obtain that metadata if they had sufficient purpose and authority to do However, so. However, if how they it retrieved reaches, it, they would have to ask the British authorities it, for authorization. How it, We're uh, suggesting that what is happening is that this material that comes no. from the Americans does not go to the same standard of authorization as the British material. No, but you're confusing the two things. You're confusing the collection of material uh, with the authorization to look at it. And that's why I think you've got yourselves well, into Well, let's a detach the one from the other. First of all, this. Is, the, is the American activity in retrieving material from these data towers, is that legal? Is it legally uh, dealt with? Because certainly the phone companies have no uh, awareness of it. Well, yes, it is lawful. It's clearly lawful under American law and in British circumstances. And what about where, British law? What about where, British law? Where we are entitled to collect uh, metadata, it's perfectly lawful for us to do that in relation to GCHQ's warrants relating to its uh, foreign intelligence mission. Domestic uh, information, content, requires a Secretary of State's warrant. Metadata, as you know, um, doesn't. What is in a really murky area is the whole issue of mass collection, 200 million uh, text messages a day, collection of metadata surrounding those text messages. And that seems to be extremely indistinct. And if it's as clear as you're saying it is, why isn't the Secretary of State standing up and saying, this is the law, here you citizens, I'll show you exactly well, how this works. Well, to be fair to the Secretary of State, uh, William Hague, he has gone on record, both in a public speech and to Parliament, to say that he is satisfied as a result of the inquiries he has made after the Snowden revelation. I mean, there is another issue which you raise, which I think is a legitimate one, which is how is the public to know whether you are barking up the wrong tree or not? We could do with a great deal more public discussion of this. Now, one of the very interesting things I thought about President Obama's speech is it was the first time I can recall a very senior political figure 
actually using the term bulk collection. And as a result of the Snowden revelations and the way they've been portrayed by the media, including your program, there's been a conceptual confusion between mass surveillance and bulk access or bulk collection. I, I think viewers are going to find it very difficult to distinguish between bulk collection and mass well, they surveillance. It wouldn't be so difficult line, if you actually did a little more explaining of it rather but, but than we're asking, creating we're asking paranoia. the authorities to explain to us exactly but, what the protection is. And this is I agree with you on that. You see, I do agree with you. I think we need more question. explanation. But you inadvertently, I hope, are making it all worse by creating the impression that this mass surveillance is going on, that no. in the donut in Cheltenham, uh, whose picture is behind you, uh, you know, there well, are rooms but, filled with people monitoring the population. Well, let me put a... There aren't. But, but let me put a final point to you, because the President of the United States, no less, has actually set up a review to find out whether mm. this is effectively out of control and what new measures ought to be brought in to limit uh, even bulk collection, uh, as you put it. Mm. Uh, nobody here is talking in those terms at all. If it's good enough for the United States to have a review, even if you think if we're in the clear, why not Britain? Well, we are having a review. Um, our Parliamentary Oversight Committee has been given the task of reviewing all of this. And you've seen the criticism of that. They are themselves insiders. <laughs> Which means they have the experience to know how the system operates and to know when and what kind of questions they should really be asking to get at the truth. There's a lot to be said for experience in this kind of, kind of business.